Journey Church. Hey, before we get started this morning, I'd like for us just kind of take a minute and uh, kind of come together in prayer. We want to remember safety, of course, for our former president, uh, Donald Trump. Regardless of your political stand, I want you to know uh, none of us are going to condone violence. Well, I'm just putting it down. Because we need to remember not only him, but we need to remember those that were injured and lost their lives at the rally uh, last night. People kept saying, boy, he was so lucky. He was so lucky. It was not luck. I don't believe in luck. It, he, yeah, he was blessed, and it was divine protection. And we've got to learn, y'all, the way to handle conflict is not that way. Uh, when we handle conflict, even individually, at church, at home, you can address the issues we need to quit addressing the person. And it's a good thing for us to learn. And whether it's political, whether it's personal, whether it's at church, if you've really got a conflict, address the issue, not the person. Even in a, on our blog, like jameswgreer.com, there's all kinds of ways to learn to handle the conflict. But that's not the right way. The psalmist in Psalms 121, 7 and 8 says, The Lord will keep you from harm. He'll watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming, both your going, and He'll do it forevermore. What I'd like to do is this. I would like for us together to read second chronicles 7 14 but i'd like us to do it as if it was journey church so let's start this way and y'all can repeat after me if we at journey church who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face turn from their wicked ways then we'll hear my voice from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land father i pray for journey church too i pray god that we would humble ourselves i pray that we would turn from our sins i pray god that you could hear us and god that you would protect us that you would guide us you would direct us i pray that i pray that our hearts would be receptive to the message today i pray for our former president uh Trump as he heals. I especially pray for the family that lost uh, their lives while they were there. God, I pray for our country. God, I pray that our country would turn back to you and that we'd be a godly nation and a godly people. I pray for healing, not only for our nation, God, but for our families and our politics. And I pray it all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. All right, praise team. Let's go. Woo. Let me have you guys stand. An interesting time in our country. But there's no better time to lift up the name of Jesus and raise a hallelujah, amen? I raise a hallelujah in the presence of
excited this is the best part of my job so what this really looks like is just it's an outward representation of what's happened inside of these children's hearts inside their lives they're saying hey I want to say goodbye to my old life I want to say goodbye to everything that was and doesn't matter anymore and that's when they go into that water but when they come out of the water they're saying goodbye to death goodbye to their sins and hello to a beautiful life and I need you guys to help me celebrate can you do that fantastic David it is my absolute honor to baptize you in the name of the Father the Son the Holy Spirit in the precious name of Jesus you as my new sister in Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, Journey. Well, get back on your feet, and let's keep worshiping the
upon the cross who takes away the sins of all forgiveness flows from hands and feet as violence meets the prince of peace behold the
Good morning, Journey Church. Woo, man, we're going to be talking about it today. Rest, relax, and repent. I like the rest. I like the relax. And repent. <laughs> when, when, I, when I started thinking about repent, one of the things I had to repent about was for a long time, I thought there was something wrong with resting and relaxing. Every time I rested and relaxed, I thought there was something wrong because I wasn't working. If I wasn't working, I was worrying. And so I had to learn there is a biblical basis for resting and relaxing. And when we learn that, man, it'll change your whole life. Amen? Amen. And we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the way some people relax is play golf. I tried it one time. I, I was at Hot Springs. I was trying to play golf. <laughs> and, uh, and I hit this house. And they came out and they got all upset. I said, man, you shouldn't be living right here. <laughs> I, I love to read, amen? I, I, I love to take pictures. Yesterday I was relaxing. I was in my Bronco and I was going down there. I found this levee to go. And I said, this is really cool. And I, and I, did, I got to try the Bronco up. So I drive down the levee and back up the levee and all over the place. It, it, that was relaxing to me. My wife said, quit doing that. And I said, well, I shouldn't have posted it on Facebook, so I won't do that anymore. You get caught. <laughs> so it's all kinds of things. Different people do different things. Rest and relaxation, are, they're not just luxuries. They're vital for your physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. But true rest involves letting go of your tension, letting go of your anxieties, and allowing God to restore your energy and bring about peace in your life. Repentance is just not about confessing sin. Are y'all ready for this? It's about anything that steals the peace of God from your life. You, you repent. You, you change directions. You let go. So what is it that's stealing the peace of God from your life? That's what we need to repent from. Amen? Remember, it's not selfish to take care of yourself. In fact, rest is a gift from God. And see, when you're at your best, you can better serve God and others. In fact, when we're at our spiritual best, God will then take care of the rest, <laughs> and we can rest. Did you know something? Last Sunday, let's give God a hand, 17 people joined Journey Church. That, that 17, I, when I started here, I had Sundays. There wasn't but 17 people here all together. I mean, it's unbelievable. And then last Sunday alone, I mean, it's unbelievable. See, the truth, we're all going to have to learn to rest and uh, uh, relax and even, even to repent. See, uh, rest and relaxation are often used interchangeable. But today, we're going to use them separate. We're going to talk about uh, there's uh, the, uh, the free from tension and anxiety. I mean, anybody need free from tension and anxiety? Oh, come on. At the, word, the place we're living at today, you don't need some free from tension and anxiety. And everybody said, yeah. well, we're going to learn how to do that. See, because really the right rest, the right, right relaxation I'm talking about will give your mind and your body a break to restore energy, support your cognitive function, and listen, and regulate your mood. Who? We need some mood regulation the first thing is, number one, you got to check out yourself. You got to, many times we tell ourselves we don't need any rest, we don't really need to relax, uh, but the truth is everybody does. See, I can tell you many, many years ago, uh, I didn't believe that I'd go, 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 and then when I hit my mid-40s, oh, <laughs> I crashed. Not only did I crash, I almost had a nervous breakdown, and I used to think, no, nobody, that'll never happen to me, but it happened. And when it happens, it's unbelievable how bad it can be. It was so bad that one time I hid under my desk hiding from people because I didn't want to see them. It's just terrible because, see, everybody has a different threshold of pain and pressure they can handle. Some people have a little threshold and some people have a lot of threshold, but everybody has a threshold somewhere. See, the best way is to minister, minister to yourself before you break that threshold. See, because really the Bible tells us, didn't you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You're not your own. In other words, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is in you. It works best, the Holy Spirit does, when you have rest. The Holy Spirit works best when you have had rest. You do understand Healthy people help people. Unhealthy people hurt people. 
We all know people that seem like their, their behavior is bad and they seem like they hurt themselves and hurt everybody around them. It's because they're unhealthy. And if they would get healthy instead of hurting people, they'd begin to help people. Because, see, when you're doing your very best to do what you can, and then things still come in your life, see, the Holy Spirit steps in and helps your life. That's what uh, Romans 8, 26. I used to pray this for other people, but it applies to me and it applies to you. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness when we're just worn out, when we don't know what to do, we don't know what to say, but we've been doing the best we can. For we don't even know what we should pray or how we ought to pray. But the Spirit himself, he intercedes for us, for me, for you, in groanings which cannot be uttered. But not uh, now, he who is searches the heart, he knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. See, when the Holy Spirit's praying for us, y'all ready? He not only knows what to pray, he prays God's will for us. So see, when we're doing what's right, when we get so tired we can't, when we relax, when we rest, the Holy Spirit takes over. He not only intercedes and prays for us, he prays God's will for us. Amen? Amen. And so sometimes I pray the Luke eleven thirteen. I pray that asking God, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask? It's written in the front of my Bible, and almost every single Sunday before I, I, I preach, I have it written right here, and I go to it, and, and I'll read that. It says, don't worry about what, what you should answer or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit shall teach you the very hour that you get here. The next one says, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask? So then you ask for him to give it to you. Amen? So one of the ways we honor God is by taking care of our body, rest, and relaxation. So this is how you get recharged. You ready to get recharged? Rest relax and repent what do we do rest relax and repent and that's the way we get recharged so we're going to talk about rest is a choice it's, but it's the right kind of rest see everybody thinks rest is just sleeping some people can sleep uh, six to eight hours man they're ready to rock and roll some people can sleep 10 12 14 hours and they're still not ready to rock and roll <laughs> I, I know i know people that slept 12 14 hours and they still get up and they're just tired it's because they don't have the right kind of rest. They don't have the biblical truth kind of rest. So you see, it's way more than just sleep. The rest I'm talking about is the truth about rest. See, the right kind of sleep, the right kind of rest frees us from tension and anxiety. Many times I used to try to go to sleep, and about the time I'd try to go to sleep, my subconscious would kick in, and I'd start worrying about my problems. And he'd run around, he'd run around, run around. I'd go from the bed to the couch to the chair. And it just seemed like I couldn't stop it. It would just go and go and go. That's why I was so excited about the truth about sleep. The truth about rest. See, the truth about rest is rest and worship can almost go hand in hand. I can rest while God works. It's the coolest thing. Once I've learned it, I get in bed the last two or three weeks. I just learned this. I get in bed and I tell my time, I tell myself, mine, it's time for me to rest and God to go to work. I can rest and I can almost worship. And so I, I get verses like the psalmist said in Psalms 121.3. He's not going to let my foot slip. He watches over you and he doesn't slumber. No, God doesn't sleep. Indeed, he who watches over me, I say me, he will neither slumber nor sleep. I mean, he, he's going to be there. I don't have to worry about what he's going to do. You, you know, you do your best and you let God do the what? Rest. While we're sleeping and resting, God is doing the working. He's taking care of it. He's watching over. See, God doesn't need any sleep. He doesn't need any rest. He's working. He's protecting. He's providing. He's guiding while we're doing it. Actually, God's healing while we're sleeping. That's part of the process. When you rest and sleep right, God steps in. He starts healing us emotionally, physically, and spiritually. So you need to say, hey, man, this is a great time. I get ready to go to bed. I say, hey, God, I'm going to rest. You're going to work. It almost sounds strange. But after three weeks, my mind is starting to believe it. I get into bed, and I say, God, guess what? I get to rest, and a calmness comes over me. I get to rest. Why? Because God's going to do the rest. I rest, he works. I rest, he works. Rest, and I'm blessed. And then Isaiah 40, 28, I really love it. Surely you know. I bet you don't. <laughs> Surely you've heard, probably not, that the Lord is God who lives forever. Oh, sure, I know that. Who's created the whole world. I bet you knew that. But he doesn't get tired. 
nor does he need rest like us. No one can even understand how great his wisdom is. It's beyond our comprehension, but there's something you need to know. He gives strength to those who are tired. Uh Uh-oh. How can he give strength to those who are tired? Because when we're sleeping, he's given us strength and more power to those who are weak. Do you understand when we're sleeping, he's given us strength, he's given us power, and he's healing and guiding and direction. And so now you rest, he works. You rest, he works. You go to bed and you start saying, hey, man, it's almost like rest is worship. It's almost like sleeping is worship. Why wouldn't you let God take care of you? It's almost like we finally learned to surrender. It's hard to surrender when you're awake because you keep trying to take control. You're not in control. I'm not in control. God's in control. Amen? So we finally say, hey, man, God, I'm going to give it to you tonight. I cannot do it. I'm going to rest, <laughs> and you're going to do the rest. See? I love Isaiah and how he talks about that and what he means about that. And you just got to See, the devil does not want you to know this. Your subconscious does not want you to know it. Do you know what's so bad about your subconscious? You've taken in everything since you've been alive. All the bad, all the evil, all the negative is still back there. And so when you try to lay down, when you try to relax, when you're not controlling your mind, it tries to come out. Have you ever wondered why you're so negative in life? Have you wondered why all these thoughts go through your mind? Do you understand why you're worried and you're in so much tension? It's because everything you've seen and heard all your life. I'm going to be preaching on that in a couple of weeks. And so what you have to do is they'll lie, the devil lie, even your mind lie, but Jesus in his word cannot lie. So instead, you have to have a self-talk. That's the best talk. You have a self-talk, and you do right before you go to bed. If you have to, you enter into rest. Hebrews 4.3 says, For we who have believed, we do enter that rest. Why don't you learn to enter into the rest? How do you enter into the rest? You tell God, I'm going to rest. God, you're going to do the rest. And God, I'm going to rest because I am blessed. God, I am going to rest. If I have to, I'll quote the scripture. I'll quote, he, uh, he will not uh, let my foot slip. He's going to watch over me tonight because he doesn't slumber and he doesn't sleep. So I don't have to worry about it. He's going to take care of me indeed, yeah. He's going to watch over me. Uh, neither does he sleep or neither does he slumber. I just don't need it. I quote Isaiah if I have to. I write it down. Surely I need to know. Surely I need to have heard. The Lord is God. He, he lives forever. What? He created the whole world, so surely he can take care of me. He does not become tired. He doesn't need any rest. Oh, no one can understand how great his wisdom is. It's beyond our comprehension. God, I do believe that you'll give me strength as I sleep. And I believe you can give me power because I'm weak. And you just go to bed. Amen? So number one, you need to learn to rest. Amen? Number two, you got to learn to relax. Now, we relax in different ways. Some people relax by reading. By the way, all these books, you can go to jameswgreer.com and get them free. (laughs) That's pretty good. Not only can you go and get the books free, there's all, it's almost like free counseling. You can type in conflict. You can type in almost any word, and it gives you insights about it. Now, sometimes reading relaxes me. Sometimes reading puts me to sleep. <laughs> right now, I'm doing more audible than I am reading because I read slow, but I can listen at 1.5. <laughs> I was out to eat the other day, and I was telling, man, I listen at 1.5. I think it was Pat Scott said, well, I wish you quit speaking at 1.5. I don't think that was a compliment. Now, cameras, take a picture. Now, that relaxes me. But what you're going to really learn about this next Sunday, we're going to start talking about how to enjoy a Sabbath like you've never done before. And I can almost guarantee you've never heard how to enjoy a Sabbath like I'm talking about. Like, like the camera, I enjoy pictures, but now I'm enjoying who created the, what I'm taking pictures of. And it's going to change the way you perceive your Sabbath and how you rest. So, man, what I'm saying is next Sunday, guess what? You need to be here. Amen? Amen. And so some people do it by, by reading. I do it by auto. I listen to it. The problem is I, sometimes I, I fall asleep while I'm listening, so I have to listen to it again. But did you know that even if you fall asleep listening to the right thing, y'all want to hear something that's real important? You know that a lot of times your subconscious picks it up. You know how you know that? You know your subconscious is active even when you're asleep. 
You say, well, how do you know that? Because I know because it wakes me up to go to the bathroom at night. (laughs) Thank goodness it's active. Amen? (laughs) And so I want to be taking the right things in instead of taking the wrong things in. So you need to be taking the right things in. So sometimes read it, but it's reading the right thing. It's listening to the right thing. Some people call, think golf is relaxing. Every time I've tried to play, it was not very relaxing. Now, Bonds, he thinks it's relaxing, don't you? How can that be relaxing when you hit houses and chase them all over the place? Now, I did like riding the goat the carts. <laughs> did you know one time I lived on a golf course? I tried it. I even took lessons. I still hit the house. But I did get where I like to get the golf course and ride all over the place. I don't think everybody else liked it. They want you to wait till they get their little turn, and then you wait and go behind them. Not, that's not relaxing. Amen? So you relax in different ways. You know, you just, you just got to learn how you relax. I enjoy nature's way. Some people exercise and run, and they call that relaxing. How far is she running now? How many? How many? Yesterday, Joy ran 15 miles. That's relaxing? Yeah, that's relaxing because when you get back, you're going to pass out and die. But but anyway, I like to... Hey, hey, practice your gratitude exercise at least once a week. Practice your gratitude exercise. Think or write down what you're thankful for. 1 Thessalonians tells us, and everything give thanks for is the will of God. When you start doing the will of God, it changes your focus and it even get, releases endorphins. It makes you better. Some people like journaling. Now, the problem with journaling, you need to know how to spell. <laughs> so I don't really like journaling, but if you do, amen. I wish I'd have written down. I wish I'd have been journaling my whole life. Uh, you know, now you can talk into it and it writes, but even then I don't speak well, so it doesn't write well. But anyway, meditation. Meditation is a great way to relax. If you read Joshua 1, 8, 9, meditation brings blessings upon your life. So listening to the right music. Hey, you know what else? You know what else? Y'all supposed to say what? You breathe in slowly. Breathe out. This is even better. You breathe in the Holy Spirit, and you breathe out your tension and your anxieties. And you begin to relax. I don't want y'all to relax too much. I got enough people sleeping anyway. Okay, anyway, so we rest, we relax, you ready? And then we repent. Now, the repent is this. The problem, hey, I like that verse. Let me read this, Joshua 1, 8. Go back to that, Joshua 1, 8. When I said meditate, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, huh? So that you may be careful to do everything that's written, and you will prosper and be successful. See, meditation not only relaxes you, it helps you to prosper and be successful. Amen? All right, let's repent. We learn to rest. Because at night when we get ready to sleep, we say, hey, God, it's time for me to rest and you to work. We relax. We find something that causes us to relax. And now we repent. Now, the secret, Psalms 32, 8 says, when I kept silent, David talking, when he had sinned and he didn't repent, my bones were wasting away, uh, though my groaning all day long. In other words, he said, it was sin. For, and even then, from day and night, your hands was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as it was heat in summer. In other words, David was talking about, man, he didn't confess his sin. He said, I was exhausted. I was feeling worn out all the time. Didn't matter if I got up. Didn't matter if I got enough sleep. Didn't matter what it was. I just stayed worn out all the time because I wouldn't deal with the sin that was in my life. God had told me what it was, but I wouldn't confess it. Then say, hey, finally, hey, Acts 3. 19, repent. Great thing about repenting, and turn to God. Why? So that your sins will be wiped out or blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Isn't that great? So now you repent, and you have all this new, new inner peace. You have this new joy. You got this new hope. You got this new strength. You got this new hope. You got this new well-being. My goodness, repent. Amen? And repent from anything that's robbing your peace and joy. Look at repent that God, what he wants for you, not what he wants from you. Amen? It changes your whole perspective on repenting. Repenting, listen, listen. Think, uh, think it, you need to relax, you need to rest, and you need to let God do the working for you, and then you need to repent. That's why it's so important for me. I've been preaching for four decades. I've been living for seven decades. <laughs> but I'm 71, not 72. But anyway... 
I can honestly say I love preaching. Amen. But I'm at the best point in my life. I can honestly say when I'm preaching, it's what I want for you, not from you. I don't want you to have unbelievable anxiety and worry and tension. I'm honestly trying to give it to you. I want you to let the Holy Spirit speak to you and know that you can't have rest. That you can't have sleep. That it's okay to relax. And that repent is not a bad word. It's a good word. That God wants to give you a peace and a power that surpasses all understanding. So you can't have any of that unless you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Until you know that you're saved, until you know you have him in your heart, you don't have the peace, you don't have the power, you don't have the presence that he wants for you. So the most important thing you can do is accept him for your Savior. If you're here today, would you stand? Just stand up and bow your head and just kind of close your eyes. It'd be terrible to come to a service like this and find out all the peace and the joy and God's presence you can have. That, that, that God even helps you in sleep at night. He protects you and he watches, watches over you at night. He, he, he does the working while you do the resting. <laughs> you can have assurance that you're going to heaven. So at head bowed and eyes closed, today might be the day that you're ready for a new rest that surpasses all understanding. I'm going to just count to three. And if you want to invite Jesus Christ into your heart, if you want him to be your Lord, you want him to be your Savior, when I count to three, all you have to do is just stick your hand up in the air. One, two, three. Just raise your hand up real high and say, hey, I'm ready. I'm ready to invite Jesus Christ into my heart. I want him to be my Savior. I want him to watch over me. I want him to protect me. I want to make sure that I'm going to heaven. So if you want to invite Jesus in your heart, just raise your hand. You might be here today and say like 17 other people did last Sunday. Today's the day I'm ready to join Journey Church. I want to be part of the family. And today's the day I want to accept Christ or I want to join the church. Just Raise your hand up and be part of the family. Say, hey, today is the day. Just stick your hand up in the air and say, today is the day. I want to join. I want to make Journey Church my home church. Or maybe you're ready to be baptized. Wasn't that exciting? I want to go see a brother and sister baptized together the same day. So whether you want to accept Christ, whether you want to follow through in baptism, or whether you want to join the church, just stick your hand up right now. And they got a little package. They'll give it to you. Father, I thank you for the day. God, I thank you that you can give rest that nobody else can. Uh, that we can relax because we know that you're in control. God, that when we repent, it's for our good. It's because you want to give us a peace that can only come from you. I pray for our church today. I pray that they're getting a new peace and they're relaxing and they're learning to rest. God, we pray that you would hear from us you would protect us that you would guide us God for those that need to continue to make decisions we have counselors up front downstairs upstairs and you need somebody to pray with you and to pray for you that's what they're here for I pray that you let God have his will and his way I pray it in the precious name of Jesus amen